As far as the four seasons of Don't Starve Together go, winter and summer are the ones that tend to catch new players out, but to this day, spring is still probably the season that I find the most annoying. From the constant rain to moose goose, frogs, bees, it can be a real pain in the ass. so I want to see if I can help you guys out as much as I can to hopefully get you through the spring to summer and the year ahead. But before we even make it to spring, one of the most important items that will make your life a whole lot easier has to be acquired beforehand in winter. You won't be able to get through the first winter without at least encountering Deerclops, and I highly recommend fighting her for the eyeball. This is used to craft the umbrella, which is one of only two items in the whole game that offers 100% wetness protection, but crucially is the only one that can be worn on the head slot as opposed to the body slot. The raincoat also offers 100% wetness protection, but wearing it means that you would have to sacrifice wearing a backpack, which is a deal breaker for me. Deerclops can be a challenging boss for newcomers though, and if the fighting alone doesn't get you, the sanity loss definitely will, but there are ways to approach this fight to make it a bit easier. Firstly, if you plan on fighting yourself, make sure to bring enough armor, healing, and sanity items. I normally use a football helmet and log suit, healing selves, and cooked cactus flesh respectively. I would also recommend using at least a tentacle spike or hand bat for this fight as the longer you stay engaged, the more sanity you lose, so it makes sense to have a weapon that does decent damage. The best way to kite Deerclops is to do a few hits and then run behind her. You can only attack in one direction, so you don't have to run too far to get out of her range. It also helps to have a walking cane or road underneath, or preferably both, to make the fight a bit smoother. If you really can't get a hang of the fight or would rather not spend the time to prepare for it, you can always lead Deerclops into other creatures to do the work for you. Tentacles are great for this, especially if you have a reed trap in your world. They will absolutely destroy Deerclops. Just make sure that no nearby spiders decide to make a snack of the eyeball. Making the umbrella will go a long way towards having a more comfortable spring, but even if you don't manage to get one, maybe Deerclops escaped, maybe you accidentally ate the eyeball, or maybe there are multiple people in your group and not everyone could get one. You still can have a relatively pleasant spring, but you will need rain protection regardless. Unless you're playing as Wirt or Wormwood, rain will continue to become more harmful the wetter you get. It can cause you to lose sanity, it can make tools and weapons slip out of your hands, and it can make you cold, especially at the start of spring when winter's just ended. Wetness is especially dangerous for WX as they'll lose both charge and health rapidly with even relatively small amounts of rain. It can also be dangerous for Wanda since aging out of existence is something that can happen very quickly if you're not careful. When there's heavy rain, lightning also poses a threat and has the potential to strike you or the buildings around you, or both. Thankfully, lightning is a pretty easy problem to solve. All you need for your base is a lightning rod or two, and as a general rule of thumb, you should place lightning rods every 14 tiles across. Obviously, if you have a large base, you may need more rods. The umbrella, rain hat, and raincoat are also able to mitigate the effects of lightning, so if you're wearing either of them outside of lightning rod range, you won't be harmed, but anything underneath you can still be struck. So if you're sailing in spring, it would definitely be recommended to build a lightning rod for your boat or equip it with a lightning conductor on a sail. Otherwise, you might be going for a swim. And unless you're happy to trade out your backpack for a raincoat, like I mentioned before, the only way to be completely waterproof in spring without the umbrella is with an umbrella and another hat. I normally go with a football helmet in this situation, but you could also use a beefalo hat, a miner hat, even if it's at zero, a straw hat, battle helm, beekeeper hat, and of course a rain hat. All provide enough protection combined with the umbrella to keep you dry. I would recommend using hats that don't have durability tied to wearing them, like the football helmet or beekeeper hat, so then you can wear them as long as you need to without having to worry about repairing them or replacing them. But after all that, the rain does actually have some advantages too. It keeps farm crops watered for you and it also speeds up the growth rate of things like berry bushes. Almost all of the crops you can grow in farms favor spring as well, the only exceptions being pepper and pumpkins, so it really is a fantastic time to stock up on fresh food. There's also a chance of getting frog rains in spring, which can definitely seem like a bad thing, but is actually a great way of getting meat and eggs. As soon as frogs start to fall, all you have to do is run over to your nearest beefalo herd or moose goose and you can simply sit down, relax and watch the slaughter unfold. 
In my experience, a fully grown beefalo herd will almost always be able to manage an entire frog reign, and if the frogs manage to kill Moose Goose, the frog reign will actually end and start again in a few minutes, giving you enough time to collect the feathers and head over to another Moose Goose if you would like to continue. This really is a great way of killing two birds with one stone. Not only do you get a safe way to deal with the frog reign, but you get free food and down feathers out of it at the same time, which you can use to make luxury fans and weather panes. Alternatively, if you're far away from moose goose or beefalo herds, you can always go into the caves or jump on a boat since the frogs only fall on land. It's also worth mentioning that frogs are neutral towards wort, so if you're playing as herd, that's one less thing you need to worry about. Also, if you plan on using a beefalo herd to take care of frogs, you should note that all throughout the spring, the beefaloes are mating, which means that they are immediately hostile to anything that comes close to them. This obviously can be used to your advantage when it comes to things like frogs, and like hounds, but it would be recommended to wear a beefalo hat when collecting all the frog legs or monster meat. And beefalo aren't the only creatures that go a bit crazy during the spring. All bees become hostile in spring as well. You can still catch them if you really want to make a bee box. Just double check that they aren't killer bees as they can't be used in the crafting recipe. With the more frequent lightning strikes, vault goats tend to be struck more often during this season than any other as well, causing them to become hostile for a few days. It's probably best to avoid the goats at this time of year unless you're trying to uncover a new herd, in which case spring is the only time that you can. If you follow a suspicious dirt pile in the oasis desert when it's raining, there is a decent chance you will find a vault goat at the end of it. And if you let it be, after a few days it will create its own herd. This can be very useful for farming vault goats later in the game for their horns and electric milk. We mentioned Moose Goose earlier on as a great way of dealing with frog rains, but there's a good chance that you might not get a frog rain in your first spring. And while Moose Goose isn't the kind of boss that will come after you like Deerclops, it may still be something that you want to kill for the loot. Or depending on where the spawns are, you may need to deal with her if she becomes a nuisance or her children are eating all your food. Now this is one of my least favorite boss fights because Moose Goose doesn't seem to follow the rules all the time and there can be a fair bit of jankiness as well, but generally she has two moves. She has a melee attack and a honk. You should be able to hit her a few times between dodging and after every honk, pick up your weapon and begin again. It goes without saying, you should bring adequate armor, healing and sanity foods. I like to use a star caller's staff for bosses like Moose Goose, but if the fight goes on into the night and you don't have one, you can always make a fire or just wait. Moose Goose actually sleeps during the night if you back away a little and you can just pick up the fight in the morning. Once you manage to take down the big bird, all of her mosslings will become aggressive to you and charge after you. The best way to fight them in this state is to bait their spinning move, follow them and hit them once they become dizzy. I would recommend using body armor and wearing an umbrella for this phase as they can trigger lightning strikes as well. It can take a bit of time to kill all the mosslings, especially if they're all coming after you at different intervals. Just try to focus on following one at a time until you manage to kill it. This also highlights why using frogs for Moose Goose is so helpful. Not only can they kill the boss, but the Mosslings will also target the frogs as well. And to be perfectly honest, there isn't a lot more that you need to worry about when it comes to spring. The rain and wetness is definitely the most annoying aspect of the season, and even if you have an umbrella, having to wear it all the time can find you wanting a bit of sanity before too long. Again, cooked cactus flesh is a great way to remedy that. Alternatively, there are plenty of crockpot dishes you can make for sanity, depending on what crops you might grow in your farm. Fancy spiral tubers are great if you have potatoes. Vegetable stingers are even better if you have toma roots or asparagus and melon sickle is somewhere in between. I think ideally spring is a time for you to recover a bit after winter. It's a period of regrowth, you know, grow some food, build out your base and get ready for the summer ahead. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful if you've been struggling with spring. You're more than welcome to ask any further questions in the comments or in my Discord server as well. I'm sure either myself or other users would be happy to help you out. I also stream on Twitch fairly regularly, so feel free to come out and hang out and chat. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Take care.